Uh, if you didn't already send out the page, full fire department recall. All alarms firefighters return to work. The air on the scanner come to work. It was an emergency that came out of nowhere. Home after home erupting in flames. The Merrimack Valley was on fire, and at first, no one knew what was going on. Bills of smoke coming from Lawrence behind me. We, I could see plumes of smoke in front of me. It just looked like a, an absolute war zone. And then the disaster turned deadly. A house explosion killed a Lawrence teenager. The young man crushed by a chimney that blew off a home and landed on his car. I am angry, <laughs> and it's not fair. The road back has been long, painstaking, and often frustrating. The last time we talked, you were so hopeful. Yeah, we were. Not anymore? Not anymore. Yeah. But for many people affected by the explosions, life is slowly getting back to normal. We're standing in our future new home. And yet some of what they lost can never be replaced. They still live with the trauma of the disaster and painful memories that will be with them forever. Everything has changed and it's, it's not going to be the same. Tonight, a look at the Merrimack Valley gas explosions one year later. The sky is blue and there is calm in the air as we walk here on Springfield Street in Lawrence. But a year ago, it was a much different story. Welcome to our special on the Merrimack Valley gas explosions one year later. I'm David Wade. And I'm Lisa Hughes. September 13th, 2018 will be remembered for the smoke that rose over this area when the fires broke out, the emergency sirens, and a sense of panic and uncertainty. People here will tell you they will never forget it, and many are still feeling the effects today. Tonight, we take a look back at what happened that day, the recovery, and what happens next. The Columbia gas disaster affected thousands of people, their properties, their businesses, and their sense of security. This map gives you an idea of how far reaching it was. The area that was impacted includes Phillips Academy in Andover, up to South Lawrence, and over to North Andover. After the fire was finally extinguished and the explosions were silenced, one person had been killed, and 21 people were hospitalized with injuries, including two firefighters. Columbia Gas is paying the price for its mistake. The utility company gave Lawrence, Andover, and North Andover $80 million, and it's proposed a settlement with residents and businesses of $143 million, which some say isn't enough. The I-Team Cheryl Fiandaka takes a closer look at the investigation to find out what happens next. These are all coming in as reported basement fires. It just looked like a, an absolute war zone. There was no warning. Columbia gas overpressurized pipelines sparked a series of explosions and ignited dozens of fires in the Merrimack Valley that started just after 4 p.m. on September 13th, 2018. A year later, are we any safer? I don't think we can say that. Our gas system is still fundamentally the same system with some of the same key vulnerabilities. Environmental scientist Nathan Phillips says the aging infrastructure makes it leak prone. There are thousands of leaks in the city of Boston. There are tens of thousands of gas leaks across the Commonwealth. Every gas leak has the potential to become explosive. To investigate those leaks, the I-Team has learned the Department of Public Utilities has just 15 inspectors, but only six are certified to conduct independent inspections. It's not enough. Those numbers compared to the 21,000 miles of pipelines that are under our streets and sidewalks throughout the Commonwealth, and 7,000 roughly of those miles are considered to be leak prone, that is a, a very small staffing number to be in charge of that scale of infrastructure. DPU says the other nine inspectors will be certified in the near future and is hiring others. The state also created a new law that requires certified professional engineers approve all plans for gas work. As for safety improvements made by Columbia Gas, the company says it installed new gas lines and is in the process of beginning compliance checks of the abandoned lines. It also installed layers of safety shutoff systems in every home to prevent overpressurization. Every customer on a low pressure system will have the benefit of having over and under protection. Works just like a circuit breaker. No one has to be there. It senses automatically the pressure of the gas in the pipes, and if it gets too high or too low, it will automatically shut off. 
We additionally are installing a lot of remote monitoring. In the end, researchers say. We have learned some lessons from that event that will allow us to be better prepared if and when something like that happens in the future. The NTSB is working on a final report of the incident. The Department of Public Utilities is also conducting an independent evaluation of the natural gas delivery system. Both reports should be out later this year. Cheryl Fiandaka, WBZ News. As the first responders rushed in, the media watched it unfold. Dozens of explosions and fires popping up all over the Merrimack Valley. But before that, there were hints that something wasn't quite right at the Columbia Gas Monitoring Center in Ohio. According to the NTSB report, the monitoring center received two high pressure alarms for the South Lawrence gas pressure system. One at 4.04 p.m., then another a minute later. At 4.06 p.m., the Columbia Gas Controller reported the event to the Meters and Regulations Group in Lawrence. By 4.11 p.m., the first 911 call had been made. At 4.30, the affected regulator in a pipe that was calling for more and more pressure was finally shut down. But it was too late. An influx of gas had already flooded the system. At 4.52, the fires and blasts were rampant. State troopers, police, firefighters were on the scene of multiple suspected gas explosions. The final fires were put out by 6.30. At 7.05 p.m., power was turned off to North Andover, Andover, and Lawrence to cut the threat of sparking any more fires. However, two critical valves of the natural gas system were not shut down until 7.24. And it was only then that Columbia gas technicians began going home to home to turn off valves which wasn't completed until the next day. If there had been a pressure valve on this home in North Andover, the owners believed that they would have been spared. Instead, the Thornhills home caught fire with kids inside who were attending a daycare here. Now they all got out safely, but the couple says the experience left them shaken and deeply resentful of Columbia Gas, a company they say still isn't doing the right thing. 42 years of memories now relegated to a dumpster. Items that escaped the flames at the East Water Street home, but were damaged beyond repair by smoke and water. 42 years, you know, you, you bring something into your house, 85% <laughs> of that, you know, we can't use. Be careful. Dean Thornhill was home when the gas ignited in his basement. And this entire area was one big uh, gas flame. When I said the, the basement was engulfed, I knew there was nothing I could do. But that wasn't his biggest concern. We had four children in the back that we had to get out of here. Four children in the home daycare with his wife, Mona. I'm thinking it's gonna explode. How hard was it to keep your composure? Oh my God. <laughs> you had to be strong for the kids. It would be hours before the Thornhills would learn they were victims of the biggest natural gas disaster in state history. Still, the Thornhills consider themselves lucky. We have a roof over our head. We have heat. We're alive. Yeah, we're alive. We got the children out, which I have nightmares about that. They say Columbia Gas replaced the lines on their street last year, but never installed the high pressure valve that would have saved their home. If a group of people came into the Merrimack Valley uh, and set a bunch of houses on fire, right, our government would have those people arrested. And they basically got away with it. I, I guess we have a mission to make the old house, give it life again. And to reclaim the life they knew wow, before sweet. September 13th. So what's it like walking in here now? It's like walking into a barn, <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, a lot of history. Yeah. Hard to tell which room you're in because you're kind of all out of focus. The smoke, fire, and water damage was so extensive they had no choice but to demolish the inside. But in February, that emptiness held promise. Do you feel more hopeful? Yes. yes. If you stay angry, it, they win. You don't want it suffers. You don't want it doesn't sleep. It's like grief. Yeah. Absolutely. It, it, really, it is. So this was the upstairs part of the daycare. Their top priority is reopening the home daycare on the property. Their daughter-in-law, who owns the business, hasn't received a paycheck since the fire. Can you imagine kids being in here again? I can. I can't wait. <laughs> At least now we're moving forward. I, I mean, take a look. Who would ever think that this makes you feel better? The luckiest unlucky people we know. 
But that was six and a half months ago, and there has been very little progress here inside since then. The Thornhills say that makes their future feel like one big, frustrating question mark. Mona and I have a new uh, saying. Well, at least the siding looks good. <laughs> the outside is looking all right, but uh, we don't live on the outside. They want to measure progress in walls and ceilings, furniture and appliances, all of which are still coming someday. Are you still months, though, from being able to move in here? I asked my contractor that yesterday, and the answer was, I don't know, I don't have an answer for you. Which means their planning only goes so far. I finally got my washer and dryer upstairs instead of the basement. <laughs> Woo! But then, unfortunately, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> well, when it's here, it's going to be great. It's not easy to stay positive. Everything's been painted, repainted. Their daughter-in-law's home daycare on the property uh, is still closed, a year's oh, income gone. No exactly. word when kids might run through the door again or grab a drink at playtime. Why is it taking so long? Insurance. The Thornhills say it took 100 days to get the first insurance check and another 100 days to determine what it would take to bring the antique home up to code. The last time we talked, you were so hopeful. Yeah, we were. Not anymore? Not anymore. Yeah. We've been neighbors for 40 years, and for them not to have a home, they have an apartment, but it's not the same thing at all. Neighbor Nancy Robinson watches their house, mows the lawn, and picks up the mail unless they're around. That's Thank it. you. You're welcome. She says she'll never forget the chaos last September 13th. Could you have anticipated on that day that it would take this long? No. Why should it? People from the outside think everything's back to normal, that everybody's okay now, everybody's in their home, everybody has what they lost, but it's not true. As they eagerly anticipate moving back, they're also hoping the judge who's deciding whether to approve Columbia Gas's proposed $143 million settlement will say no and order the company to dig deeper. It sounds like a lot of money, but once everybody gets paid and everybody gets their piece of the pie, the, the pies, <laughs> It's crumbs. I don't think it's going to be enough to make anybody whole, not the victims anyway. And that settlement is also top of mind in the city of Lawrence. Mayor Dan Rivera agrees with the Thornhills. It's not enough money. WBZ's Paula Evans sat down with Rivera to talk about the tragedy and the pain it's caused his city. Mayor Dan Rivera looks out over his city after a blur of a year that for this Army veteran seemed to begin in slow motion. But it wasn't until I got to the scene over on Chicken Ring Road and I saw the destruction and the kind of mayhem that people were running around that I thought, you know, this is, this is a bigger disaster than I've, I've ever thought it would, would be happening right now. In your service in Iraq and Kuwait, did you ever deal with a disaster of that magnitude in the military? Yeah, in the military, it always, it, it's funny because, you know, um, you guys always come up with good questions. <laughs> That's what we like to do. But it wasn't the service and we were at Desert Storm. You know, it was planned disaster. Mm. We were attacking, they were attacking us. You know, it was that type of situation. Um, but ref what, what we were going through on the 13th felt a lot like the refugee relief that we did after the, the battles. Mm. The very first thing that they just ensured that they were present and that they were calm mm. and they were in control. Mr. Mayor. In control, even as his own home was evacuated. The mayor led his city amid a tinderbox of danger, communicating each new phase of the battle plan. Let's talk about the moment you found out about Lionel Rondon, because that 18 year old boy lost his life. And I think so many people were just horrified at the thought of him sitting in that car and just by chance losing his life well you know there was so much providence in what happened um and that it wasn't later in the day yes. um it wasn't later in the season so not colder. as many people would be as ho at home and not as many people would be at home um so uh, there was so much providence and then you thought you know all we needed was just a little bit more providence mm -hmm. and uh and then you think what, what do you got to do right away can you get to the family it fuels a lot of the, the anger I have about this because they were so lucky, but they were so unlucky in that one family. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we put our arms around them and we've been taking care of them. And that's why, to me, I'm a big advocate of Columbia Gas losing their license to do business in the state of Massachusetts. I was going to ask you about that. This is a very important issue to you that they lose their license. What's the only thing that you can do to a company to 
I'm sure that other companies who are in the same business don't do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And it's just say, if this happens on your watch, you can no longer do business in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. It's that simple. As a child, Rivera's own family had come to Lawrence hey, after their home burned in a fire in the Bronx. So he understood what displaced families were going through. It just showed me that the community that gave me so much, I had an opportunity to give them back and, 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 be, and be there for them in a way um, I never thought that I would be able to, to give back and, mm -hmm. uh, and show my appreciation to them. Your life really came full circle. And I think it took a village to make Dan Rivera, and I think in the end, you know, I think the, the community came together and it took a village to get us out of this crisis. Mr. Mayor, it's been a long year. Pa, thank you so much. Thank you. For months after the gas disaster, dozens of trailers were parked right here at Sullivan Park in Lawrence. They were brought in to provide temporary shelter to all of the folks whose homes didn't have heat or hot water. But a lot of these people were here all the way through Thanksgiving. At that point, more than two months after the disaster, recovery efforts were in the early stages. Columbia Gas paid for thousands of meals, including a sit-down Thanksgiving dinner for people who couldn't be at home. Temperatures were bitterly cold last Thanksgiving. Just a few days earlier, everyone living in the trailers here endured a snowstorm with few of the comforts of home. As you can imagine, all that wear and tear took a toll on Sullivan Park. And when the trailers were moved out of here in December, this green space was a mess. Lawrence Mayor Dan Rivera approved more than a million dollars in repair money to fix it. It opened back up this summer and it looks great now. And oh, by the way, the city of Lawrence sent the bill to Columbia Gas. And this ordeal was just as frightening for business owners as it was for residents. This is surveillance video from Bueno Malo, a restaurant in Andover. The co-owner, Franco Lozano, can be seen looking under a deep fryer when suddenly a burst of flame shoots out because of that overpressurized gas. It was a terrifying moment, and what followed were many challenging weeks. More than 900 businesses were affected by the disaster. And here at Bueno Malo, Franco actually had to close the doors for seven long weeks. Christina Rex takes a look at how this restaurant and others are still working hard to get customers back in the door. We've lost so much, I can't even tell you. At Carleen's in Lawrence, cooks are bustling in the kitchen. Have a great day. And patrons are getting a fresh pour. It all looks normal, but business is slow and the owner is scrambling to fill seats like he used to. Five o'clock in the morning, six or seven tables of guys, different crews, all knowing each other, all talking over the tables. That morning rush is gone. The regulars eat at new spots because the 35-year-old diner shut down for 16 weeks after the gas explosions. Well, honestly, I, I think it's three days. Week after week, owner John Farrington was sure his kitchen would reopen, only to have another stovetop or appliance need fixing by Columbia Gas. I threw my hands up and realized I had $10,000 of bad food. That helpless feeling hit every restaurant owner in the Merrimack Valley, including Franco Lozano at Bueno Malo in Andover. That first three weeks with uh, not knowing, you know, if our staff was going to have a job, not knowing if we were going to have money to, to pay my staff, it was, it was tough. The Mexican restaurant hadn't even been open a year when the explosions hit, sending flames from the deep fryer up to the ceiling and closing the restaurant for seven weeks. Physically, I might have been okay. Um, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It was, um, you know, there's some lingering effects. One year later, Bueno Malo has bounced back. The town has really returned to us um, in force. Lozano is planning a restaurant week and finding ways to bring in new customers. For the young Andover restaurant, the technique is working. But for 35-year-old Carlene's of Lawrence, an old-school cash-only diner, bouncing back has been harder than expected. We don't want to go out of business. Uh, we just want to get back to a, a comfortable spot again. Good luck. In Lawrence, Christina Rex, WBZ News. 18-year-old Lionel Rondon had just gotten his driver's license. That evening, he was in the driver's seat of a small SUV when an explosion blew a chimney off a house that landed on his vehicle. He was parked right there in that driveway, ready to go out with friends. When suddenly he was gone, the only person killed in the Columbia gas disaster. The I-Team Cheryl Fiandaka spoke with Rondon's mother, father, and sister about their terrible loss. 
These are some of the last videos Lionel Rondon's family has of him, dancing to Latin music and playing with his two-year-old niece, who he adored. I always think, like, wow, out of so many explosions, and only my brother died. I am angry. <laughs> and it's not fair. Lionel was the only person killed in the Columbia gas explosions and fires that damaged more than 100 homes and left several people injured. On September 13th, the teenager was sitting behind the wheel of an SUV parked in a friend's driveway in Lawrence. When the house exploded, sending a chimney toppling down onto the car, crushing Lionel and injuring two of his friends. This shouldn't happen to anyone because this is horrible. Knowing that he's not going to call you, that he's not going to come visit you. Lionel's mother says her oldest son was kind, respectful, and caring. He loved music, cars, and most of all, his family. Wiping away tears, she told the I-Team, it's hard to talk about Lionel without crying. I miss you. Love. Too much. Miguel Leonel's devastated dad says he cannot believe his son is gone, telling us his life ended that day too. I no believe, him, you know. Mm -hmm. I no believe in him. I think he live. I don't think he died. Investigators at the National Transportation Safety Board have placed the blame for the disaster on mistakes made by Columbia Gas and the overpressurization of gas lines which caused the fires and explosions. Were you aware that this was a practice occurring at Columbia Gas? And at a congressional field hearing last November, legislators raised questions about the company's practices, calling them tragically deficient. I don't want no other family going through this. It's not fair for us or any other family to go through this. Just this past summer, the Ron Don family settled its wrongful death suit with Columbia Gas, which included a scholarship fund in Lionel's name. The Ron Don family has conducted itself with incredible strength, grace, and love throughout this tragic loss, as well as the legal process which followed. I want his death to mean strength. I want the community to remember him. Earlier this year, Senator Markey proposed legislation in the Lawrence teen's name. The Lionel Rondon Pipeline Safety Act is moving through Congress and would create new protocols for natural gas companies. Cheryl Fiandaka, WBZ News. People living in the Merrimack Valley have been through so much. Many of them had to make major home repairs as a result of the explosions, and others had to completely rebuild. Lawrence police officer Ivan Soto continued to help others as his home burned to the ground. Fortunately, his family made it out safely. And one year later, they have a new life in this new home. 60 Jefferson, the address of Veronica and Ivan Soto's pride and joy and heartbreak. So today is demo day. It is a bittersweet feeling. This is what it looked like on the afternoon of the gas explosions. My co-anchor and I were on the news live when we saw your house. We worked so hard to, to acquire that home and um, having to accept that it was probably going to be no more. That was really, really tough. Thankfully, their teenage daughters were not hurt, but they lost every picture, every keepsake, and their two cats, Milo and Simba, were killed. Those were our boys, you know. Some people may not understand that, um, but they were part of the family. In the weeks after the explosion, the Sotos were put up in an apartment. It's where I first met them. What is life like right now for you? It is overwhelming, very. The chaos of piecing their lives back together would never compare to the chaos of that day a year ago. <laughs> Ivan, a Lawrence police officer, was at work. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. The first home that Ivan went to was on Chickering Road, where a young man, Lionel Rondon, would lose his life, his SUV trapped under a fallen chimney. And we all just jumped on top of the car and just tried moving the chimney. Um, and we just couldn't move it. Get in your vehicle and leave the area. After evacuating everyone on that street, Ivan called his wife at work, who called to check on their daughter at home. Everything just happened while I'm on the phone with her. Everything just happened. There was the, there was the, the boom. There was smoke. There was fire. 
And soon, there was nothing. When I saw her house, I'm like, no way this is real. Ivan rushed home, saw his house, saw his family, and did something stunning. I just went back to work. I know my family's okay already, so help other families. You know, that, that's the whole point of being a police officer and, and just helping the community. And the community was grateful. Tens of thousands of dollars poured into a GoFundMe page for the Sotos. And the charred remains of their home were leveled. But not before Veronica was able to salvage a few precious items. What did this mean to you when you found this? Oh my God, uh, it was a lot. Baby footprints, sneakers, diplomas. At least I have something. Old items helping with a new start. The beginning of this new year saw the beginning of a new home. The frame of a two-story open concept colonial. We're standing in our future new home. And he was also standing alongside Congresswoman Lori Trahan. For Ivan's heroism, the Sotos got an invitation to the State of the Union. It meant a lot for a couple whose patriotism was always on display at home, with a flag that survived the flames to be framed. The flag tells a story. It shows resilience in itself. The Sotos learned a lot about resiliency and learned a lot about community generosity and, well, having good insurance. By May, their new home was ready. On the same lot where their home was torched, the Soto family took us on a tour. This is uh, the kitchen area. This is my little getaway. And for the first time, their two daughters, Destiny and Aaliyah, felt strong enough to speak with us about what they went through. What has this eight and a half months been like? We're getting there, but it's not there yet. Yeah. It's kind of hard because a lot of people think, oh, you have a new house, everything's just done. Yeah. Like, you're happy again, everything's perfect, but it's, it's not like that, you know? It doesn't take away that pain. And you think about it a lot. Mm -hmm. How often? Every day. Yeah, every day. The Sotos are crystal clear about this. They are excited, they are grateful, but that's not the only clarity they wanted. I want to make it clear. We have not accepted or received one cent from Columbia Gas. It's not the road we wanted to take. And so Veronica and Ivan Soto filed a civil lawsuit against the gas company, seeking a jury trial. And that's what uh, we want to make sure that Columbia understands. You know, they need to know that, you know, it happened, but this is a, an emotional scar that they're going to have for the rest of their lives. Despite what the Sotos have been through, despite what everyone in these three communities have been through, They've really bonded together, persevered, and risen above in this difficult time. And that's the kind of resilience that defines the Merrimack Valley and the people who live here as they embrace the good and help one another through the challenges. This is the Merrimack Valley Explosions one year later.